Welcome back to the Late Show with Lamar Odom and Aaron Cohen. Lakers lost another game. Well, we need to back up. First of all, happy birthday, brother. Oh, thanks, bro. Love you, bro. Appreciate that. Love you. Forty-three. Yeah, bro. And uh, how was the how was the party? I didn't party, bro. You didn't party? Nah, man. You know you know what? I won't be putting anybody in a bad mood, but I think when 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 I seen that thing, you know, happen to take off, right? Kind of took my party spirit away. from I hear you. And, uh, you know, he was at a private party that happened. So I'm like, damn, I'll be damned if I give somebody the opportunity to, uh, you know, harm myself or anybody in the party. I know I'm protected, but I don't even want to even be around that type of energy. So I said, let me just chill out, relax, thank God um, for being here. And um, More of a low-key kind of thing? Yeah. Friends, family. Well, happy birthday, another year, another blessing. Thank you. Uh, yeah, now we can talk about the Lakers. They gave up 139 points last night to the Jazz. You, you won't win. Now, we watched the game a little bit uh, just a few minutes ago. And to win a game, giving up 139 points, you probably would have to play almost damn near perfect. Like, you wouldn't have to be – you probably wouldn't be able to get in a penalty. have to probably limit your turnovers and um, shoot a high percentage from the field, which they struggle to do at times. Their offense was there. The offense was definitely there. I think they scored like 100 and something points, like over 110, but they gave up 139. Yeah, the objective in sport. <clears throat> of course. The score. No, but we've, we've, despite our very poor record, we've had one of the best defenses in the league. Obviously, not including last night, but that's been well, the problem. I, I they think, can't get have good offense and def- good defense on the same night. I think that's a good place to like stand on right now. Like, you know. Um, you're not gonna shoot the ball well. If you're not gonna put the ball in a basket, um, at least you can go out there and um, play defense um, with um, a high and intensity level we, and, and a high amount of energy. We've done that. Well, we're two and eight. So that well, brings. I, I think you know you gotta have people healthy too. LeBron missed the game. Yeah, we were down three starters last night. No you, Papev, LeBron, yeah. or Lonnie. So there you go. But, you know, um, they put Russell in the position to to shine and look good. Like He's he did, in the bright like spot right now. And Russell's going to win the um, the sixth minute of the year. Or at this you know, point, I wanted to bring that up because you're sort of like a trendsetter in the sense that you were the first one to talk about trading AD, and now everyone's talking about trade AD, everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then talk about Russ, sixth minute of the year, before anyone said it. Yeah. Before he even came off the bench, you're yeah. like, I wanted to be the sixth man of the year. Everyone started talking about sixth man of the year. Well, because I, I, I played with Russell, um, and I know when it comes to basketball, where his heart and his head is, it's in the, it's in to make the right play every play. Um, and that becomes infectious. And if that be- can, can become infectious on this Laker team, I, I, I would love to see that. If people try to emulate on the team, his effort and his energy. Um, then I think the Lakers, that that'll be really good for the Lakers. Yeah, I said on the, previ- on the previous podcast that I think the Lakers should trade Russ. This was before he started really balling out, and I still stand by that. Yeah. And I don't want people to twist my words. I never said that I don't like Russ, and I think that he's a bad player, because I don't think that. And I Like you just said, his effort, his energy that he brings, and now he's actually playing well, I still think the Lakers should trade him, because I think they can get really good value for him. Yeah. Um, because that's what everyone wants to hear from both of us. What do you think about Russ? Has it changed now that his value has skyrocketed? Because he's really – he's played with a completely different confidence. And you can see that. He's hitting threes. He's finishing his layups. He's hitting his free throws, playing really good defense, blocking, well, stealing. I think, he's doing everything. Well, I think if you're going to do it, then you do it. Like, don't leave your, you know, your, your, your third best player – um, who's giving his playing his heart out? Don't leave him in that limbo. So what do you personally? I I agree. And like if you're gonna do it, then do it. He's been like that since he stepped foot on don't, the don't, court. Don't don't don't. That's not a, a good place to be in for any professional athlete. Like looking over your back. Am not, I he gonna be here tomorrow? Yeah, not knowing when it's gonna come. So what do you do? You, have, you don't, has, your chance, has your stance changed at all on Russ, or do you still? No, play? I still want to be here for him for his just for himself for me to be able to watch him as a fan. Is it still trade AD for you? Yeah, but if you but like I said again, if you're gonna if you're gonna trade Russ, then do it. Don't have him looking over his back and go get the Miles Turner and 
Buddy Hill. Buddy Hill, yeah. And, and both of them picks. went crazy last night. You I think me? Miles Turner had like 37 points and Buddy Hill had like five threes and very efficient. So they're balling out. Yeah. But and now now that everyone's talking about trading AD, Bleach Report just came out with an article with four trade packages for AD. And I want to know what you think. So the first one is a crazy trade. It's very simple. It's straight up AD in a first round pick, one of them, for KD. Would you do that? If I'm the LA Lakers. <laughs> if you're the Lakers. <laughs> Fuck yeah. In a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. And if if the Nets would like if they would entertain that, then the Lakers would be stupid. I don't think it's crazy to say because you look at look Not at Brooklyn say. right now with the whole Kyrie situation and the coaching situation because yeah. they were supposed to to hire uh, Udoka and now they're all now they're uh, they're telling Joe Tsai to like you know, yeah, be and careful with just that. Give <laughs> just give us KD. Just give us KD, huh? And go get Victor, cause y'all be right there. <clears throat> you you can have Victor and Ben. Yeah, so that was one of them, and the other one that I want to talk about, cause there was a there was like two of them were like whatever, like not, they're stupid. The second one was with the Bulls. It was Zach Levine, Patrick Williams, Drogic, and their twenty twenty three first round pick for AD straight up. Zach Levine. Zach Levine, Patrick Williams. Goran Dragic and a twenty twenty three first round Zach pick. Zach Levine and Patrick Williams. Yeah, and a first and a first round pick for AD. What's the what's when is the first round pick that's not going to play be here? Twenty twenty three. So like soon. That's, that's the, like next that's year. next next year. Again, if you're gonna do it, do it. You gotta do it. So this is okay. This what's is the other one. Damn, that's a. Good you want to hear other two? Okay, Zach that, Le, because I'm thinking about you. Got to you got to remember. You you you're putting these players with LeBron James, yeah. Right, so you're saying who could I? So with Zach Levine and Patrick Williams, Zach Levine actually gives you youth, three point shooter, and a pick next year, and and Drogic. LA loves and Drogic basketball players that can entertain. Levine and I like Patrick Williams because that's defense, and Dragons give you. A good backup point guard. You now. can play defense. He oh no, hold up! I'm just gonna start dragging Watch the point guard. Because who starts at the point guard right now for the Vegas? Kendrick Nunn. Eh. No, no, no. It's it's uh Patrick Beverly. Okay. Who like has not been playing well so far? I know it's been ten games, so. But it's, I think it's a podcast, so we go by game by game. Sorry for all the Laker players. That's the way the Lakers. By the way, that's the way Laker fans are. They they have bipolar disorder. Extreme, an extreme case of it. They'll win two games, and everyone's like, "Oh, we're back! We're gonna win a championship!" Don't trade anyone. Russ is a goat. And then we lose three games in a row. Like, fuck this team. I'm done. Trade everyone. Tra- <coughs> trade LeBron. <coughs> trade AD. We'll get into that later. Uh, okay, Knicks. Lakers get R.J. Barrett, Mitchell Robinson, Robinson, Obi Toppin, Quentin Grimes, a 2023 first round pick, protected. Whatever via blah 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 for Anthony Davis. All of that for AD. Barrett, oh, oh, Robinson, Andre Toppin. Barrett, Obi Thompson, Obi, Obi Toppin, Obi Toppin, Mitchell Robinson, I like Quentin that. Grimes. Quint- I don't know. I like Quint- and Grimes. a first round pick in 2023. That's a lot. So look at what we're talking right now. We're talking about all of this. And then when you talk about Russ, you're talking about a much, you know, less value. I still don't, I, I haven't really spoken on AD and if we should trade him because I, I really don't know. That's your boy. We don't want to trade him. It's all right. It's all right to say. But I also want to be real. I I just don't know if I would trade him. You cool with the guy that, you know, might play? Yeah, but I just hope. How many, okay, how many games is it right now that we play? Ten. Ten. And he's missed how many games already? He's missed one. One game. He's played through injury. He's made the effort to be on the floor. It's only been ten games. We're, we're, we're injury at ten games. Uh, he's Coming back straight from training camp. Could keep you out of a game. It's. I mean, you're right. It could happen. But when you're talking about names like this, Kevin Durant, or these humongous packages with young guys and picks, I think the Kevin Durant, it's crazy. And Zach Levine, I love it. But that's how it goes to show you how good AD is, or how, and how good he can become. Because this is basketball. He's still at the age where you can still get better. It's just about his availability. Availability it's is the best ability. The best ability. That's right. So I mean, that's that's what that's what that's what's been the discussion. And now that you know, Lakers are on a three-game skid, people are talking about, and this is crazy. 
trade LeBron, trade AD, and rebuild. Trade Russ and rebuild. Well, what do you think about you that? You trade LeBron, then you know you, you're you doing more than rebuilding. You're throwing the towel and everything. You know what I mean? But not necessarily. Trading LeBron? I mean, if you did, right, would be like... <laughs> You, you, I, I can't like, believe we're talking about this right no, now. I'm, no, I'm, you brought it up. Yeah, I didn't bring I it up. Didn't, it wasn't but my idea. I, yeah, it was I, the know, fucking okay, fans. Okay, oh, it's from the, it's the fans. <laughs> so, if you did, you're only making that, you're probably going to put yourself right back into contention. Do you think? You, you can get you're half getting, a team. You're getting, you can get half getting, a team. You're getting a historic. That's already that's like put you're together. You're getting a historic hall. You can already picks and like players. that's like put together already. You probably you're picking two or three players that have been playing together already. Right. You're getting at least two stars. So and picks and his and his and his basketball. It's the, bro, it's the, your guy. It's yeah, God James. The, it's, it is God James. I do call him God <laughs> James. But. God knows that the world evolves. Wow. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> and to keep the involvement of my purple and gold, it's almost bigger than God, James. The only, t- only time it Holy can be bigger shit. than God is when it comes to purple and gold. This Me. shit is crazy. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how much I look up to him as an athlete. I know you know, everything he does. I know, no, right when I met you, like I can tell like you're you're big on LeBron and what he's done. But if if that thought came into Jeannie's beautiful brain, you gotta understand that you're getting two or three players that have already played together. Two or three players that could like really play. Like you could probably go get like Jalen Brown. And I was about I was about to say that. I was literally about to say J, J, Jalen and Jason. I'm just saying. I, <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, I didn't want to say it. Like, I'm just saying. Like to put it like <laughs> to put it there to really make history like history. Like I'm thinking that big because you got to think that big. You ain't going to get the kid from. Um, you're not going to get Jalen Green and Porter. No. But you, you know, you know, what I'm you like, know you're gonna say like you're gonna shoot for the fucking moon. I'm gonna go get the two best players that know each other already. You, happens. but you knowing Genie, and I don't know what your relationship with Rob is. Do you think they would ever do that? No, they would never trade LeBron. No. Never. This is hypothetical. No, no, I know, and this it's is, and this, this is what fans, is, this and, is fans and fans love it. They I would never eat this shit up. Yeah, I would like. I'm it's just fun to think about. I gotta go play a Lakers series right now. We'll play after this. I'm, it's two two. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? I'm going against Gobert and. uh Anthony Edwards. I mean, Carl Anthony. Sam and Anthony Edwards. But you can you could probably go get like I mean that's what I would ask for. Yeah, 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 yeah. But speaking of Genie and Rob, they're under really heavy criticism right now. Like, oh, as, they're not playing because they're the ones who constructed this roster, and everyone's like, before the season even started, they're like, we don't have any shooters, and it's a new coach. Everything is brand new. Team, new players. Together, and you, you already you know after training camp, the team is already put together. Yeah, but that's a problem. The roster is a problem. It's like, do you think that they deserve blame? That's what that was a very hot hot topic about Plink and Genie. The, everyone's after after them because let me tell you this. What do you want to trade? Everyone, everyone, no, 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 step down or whatever, which they won't. Step. Down. But I'm saying everyone is off. They just off, want a championship in 2010. They but short term memory, short term memory, Laker fans especially. Oh. It's not like Minnesota where like they never want to. I don't know if they ever won, but. Everyone's off of Russ now. Everyone's like realizing that he was never the problem. Mm-hmm. We we knew that he was never the problem. So, they think they're, they're the so problem. now they're like, oh, who? It's Genie and Rob. Like they want the scapegoat. So, but now that everyone understands that Russ was never the problem, what do you think? Because I personally think that they deserve a lot of the blame. They put this roster together, along with obviously LeBron, the GM. Like he wanted Russ, but this roster this year we have no shooting. And Who's I think the kid that hit the shot, um, Matt Ryan. Yeah, that's called like the shot now in LA, right? Matt, you know he was a door dasher a year ago. Was he? Crazy story. We're gonna have him on the pod for yeah, we sure. We're gonna get him on. We're gonna get him on. He from the he from the mud. Then. I can respect that. Yeah. Where's he from? Where's he from? We'll check on that. But he was literally driving DoorDash. He played in the summer league. 
played well for the uh, the Celtics, but ultimately did not end up getting a contract and found his way with the Lakers. He played very well in the preseason for the Lakers, and he beat out a couple of other players for a, a roster spot, and he got it. He's just not getting minutes yet, but he's one of our best shooters. He's probably the best shooter we have. But I want to get your thoughts on on but LeBron. On to trade LeBron again? No, 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 no. Get, no. Probably like, get Bradley Bill and present. I, I, and present I get so just, uncomfortable talking about trading LeBron because I don't. You, is he from New York? Oh yeah, we gotta get boy. him on here. We will probably get him Bradley Bill and Chris and and Chris Stop. I said the the Chuck guar- guaranteed we're gonna and get Kuzma back. You probably get podcast. three. You could probably get those three for LeBron to bring LeBron back to Washington. I bet you they give Bradley Bill up, Chris Stop, and Kuzma. LeBron's not going to Washington. Why not? She's not going to Washington. He wants. If I think if you go, I, don't, I can't. Again, I can't believe I'm saying this. I don't think you're gonna trade him, but like I feel like if he were to go anywhere, it'd be like the Knicks or like a huge city where like he can continue like what well, he does. Back to Cleveland. Back to Cleveland. Evan Mobley, Mitchell. That's my guy, USC. And you gotta give him up if you're going to get LeBron. If LeBron, this is hypothetical. I'm not giving up guard James by no means. Yeah, let's make that clear. You know what I'm saying? Because people are going to twist it. That's what they do. They twist they will, it. But that's why I keep saying it. <laughs> Lamar Odom would not give up guard James. There you go. Clip that. <laughs> so just to get, I want to make sure you don't think the Lakers should rebuild. I personally don't. I think it's a really stupid idea. But that was another question that we definitely had to address. You don't think the Lakers should rebuild? No, every rebuild means start over, right? I mean, We're not doing that. You got. You probably got to make a trade. Yeah, and if you want to make, if you want to make a playoff push. Yeah. Last thing I want to say before we get to the quick, the quick hitters to finish, is um, Palinka said that he wanted to wait till Thanksgiving before. I think after two games, three games, he wanted to wait till Thanksgiving. So like twenty games in. Do you agree with that? Like I and well, from yeah, what you've been saying, no. Yeah, but because yeah, no, I, I agree with it because you said make a trade now though. No, but that means he's, you know, he, if he said. Give it to Thanksgiving. That means he's gonna be working. Right, he is. Just in case, and he is. If things are not working out, that he's gonna have to pull a plug and make a trade. He is. Because the Lakers is easy to trade trade for him. Because ain't too many players gonna say no. I don't. Ain't too many players gonna be saying I don't want to go here. They not win. Right. I don't care if they even. You know, if they're in the dumps, you probably want to be in L.A. Then. Yeah, hey, you have guys you know what I mean? coming off championships coming to the Lakers. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the Jazz? We were talking about this right before the pod. Obviously, they're showing that they're well coached. They you know, play beautiful basketball. Because we were talking about their team, and I said that's the key word. It's the T word that we use. Team. They don't have a single. I don't think they'll have a single All Star this year. If you got team, a team that plays unselfish, and puts defense first, and they share the ball, and you know play basic basketball, you'll see the results. Because it's not. You know, rocket science. No, building they're just science. playing good basketball, and they're the number one seed in the West right now. I think eight, eight and three. Um, and okay. They, you know, those players are, you know, they stay home at night. They probably get in there working in the gym. It clearly shows. Yeah. They're very sharp mm-hmm. on both sides. So I mean, Lakers got a game tomorrow. Lakers Clippers. What do you think? Who's home? Clippers. Let's go to the game. I'm in the house. <laughs> Cause you play for both. That's a fact. You rooting for the Lakers, of course, right? Yeah. Just wanted to make sure. But I'm a fan. The Clippers. So you know, I'm been in LA. Cut, since, you cut that part I've out. been in LA since I've been in, I've been in LA <laughs> since I've been 19. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I could be LA and turn iffy in a spot according to according to who's winning. Now I'm a Laker fan. <laughs> I was like, oh no. Nah, I'm fucking. Sure. I'm a Laker fan. Nah. Um, but yeah. So we're coming off of a three-game losing streak. We got the Clippers tomorrow. What do you think a win like that can do for the Lakers? Because I don't think they've beaten them. In the, I think it's been eight or nine matchups. They haven't beaten the Clippers. I think it's, it, it means it, a lot. I think it is, but whatever it is, got to remember, it's going only for a short period of time, even if you want to lose. You're still going to have to next game. get up the next day and, and, and play the next game. But every game for the Lakers right now, they should be looking to build off of. So hopefully they can get that win, and, you know what I'm saying, wrap it up. Get some good energy in the building. Yeah, and Darvin Ham has been kind of the opposite of what Vogel was like after games. He he does not sugarcoat or shy away from calling out players, um, ownership. Yeah. He literally, we can put it up on the screen, but he basically said that <clears throat> we don't have money to make any trades or we don't have cap space yeah. and we don't have much to trade. And 
most importantly, our players need to step up, our role players. And he named names. He literally said, none need to step up. Austin Reeves needs to step up. Step up. Um, that's good. That guys, the, he's that's, calling them out. And he was like, you guys need to play better. But that's good that the coach is holding them accountable and, and, and not running from confrontation. Because any relationship, there's going to be confrontation. You feel what I'm saying? Um, and confrontation is healthy. Um, especially when you're trying to get yourself out of a hole. Motherfuckers got to be held accountable. Yeah. No matter what. And I'm they're getting paid. And, you know, I, I want them to play, you know, well. Because at this period of time in, in America, like, you know, Darvin Hand is, is a young, you know, black coach. Yeah. And I want to see him, you know, I want to see them perform so we can kind of keep him in that spot. And he's very optimistic, but he's not optimistic in the sense where he's just like, floating bullshit around like oh we'll be fine blah 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 he's actually like we we need to get better and we need to realize who we are and have expectations realistic expectations mm. um with our roster um he's like but this is a process and we're going to turn the corner but he's not like like vogel last year's like oh we'll be fine they like, completely avoid everything and mm. that's something that laker fans really liked so i personally am a big fan of darvin ham even though rough start of his to his head coaching career but i mean it's, it's been 10 games and it's a long season so it is a long season. <clears throat> One, the Lakers have that on their side, but what we, what we don't have on our side is 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 um, you know what I'm saying fresh legs. Our best player is, is 20 years in, so it's like really like carpet damn. Like if you got if you want to start winning games then right right now is the time. Yeah, before it gets too. I mean, who knows what my man's gonna say when God's gonna say I got to sit down, man? It's, it's a wrap. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like who, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting it to come. Really, I mean, you know, you know they got those commercials where where it's God, James, and Father Time. Yes, you know what I'm saying. I'm just thinking about from the professional NBA, from the aspect player, from the motherfucker. Got how many rings LeBron got? Four. Four. And he about to surpass Magic Johnson and and Kareem. Like after that, like I agree. And I'm a big, big Kobe guy. Am I going to be able to and get I, up to play OKC at OKC? <laughs> you feel me? Well, the best do and the greats do. And somebody that's considered themselves the GOAT, well, I know he will. So, but I, we don't know how much longer we got him, so they got to start winning games now. Yeah. Um, quick hitters to finish it off. And this is this was surprisingly asked by like four or five people. Would you ever consider a coaching job in the NBA? Hundred percent. It's so much that I know about the game. For me to keep all this knowledge to myself is probably selfish. Hopefully, we see Lamar with an NBA team. Hundred percent. Hopefully, with the Lakers, keep I it in the so. family. A player you always wanted to play with but never got the chance to. Kevin on it. Wow. Mm -hmm. You you never played with LeBron, did you? I mean USA, but that's different. But like, Kevin Garnett. Season, okay, so why why Kevin Garnett? Because of his just intensity. The only person that I've you know that I've seen that's that intense is was in a two guard form. And that was Kobe. His tell he just wanted to win every possession. Every possession. Like, <laughs> What's the craziest shit he's ever said to you? <laughs> I know he's always well, talking. We was, oh, he was out. We was out there with the Clippers, and um, like we was dunking. It was like a lot of dunk. So, ooh, these motherfuckers out here got my dick hard. Y'all <laughs> dunking and shit. I was like, damn, this dude is intense. <laughs> <laughs> that was when you with the Clippers. Yeah. <laughs> All right, last one. How was your relationship with the 2009, 2010, or 2008, 2009, 2010 squad? Like. Oh. How, Shannon oh. Brown, always Bynum, always like, and my and my and for for both of my teams, those teams like my, I think I was like the locker room guy. You know they I'm called saying? you the X Factor. Yeah, just like always had made sure dudes was loose, being themselves. You know what I mean? I think it was important for us to have a you know a a good player on the team that the players respect that can be themselves around Kobe. So then they could feel like they could ease or fit in. That didn't because I wasn't like practicing perfect. I didn't have the perfect practice habits. 
and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So what do you what do you mean by that? I'm just saying like. Like for like for being late for a bus or something, like right? That. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, or, okay. Or maybe just late for you know what I mean? Just the littlest shit. You feel me? But if they feel like a dude like me, because Kobe was like everything was Kobe is Kobe as an NBA player. Everything yeah. is perfect. Kobe is Kobe. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So they seen me. I could have mishaps. Right. You feel me? Maybe on and off the court, but I could still be close to Kobe. Film. I think that was. I hear what you're saying. To bridge, to be that bridge between my teammates and Kobe. That was my role, really. I think. I mean, it makes they, from a fan's perspective, it kind of makes might, sense. They might have a different perspective, but that's what I thought. But I mean, we look forward to having some of those guys on here. Um, I know we got a couple lined up. We won't name names yet, but they'll be on soon. Yeah. Um, looking forward to game tomorrow, Lakers Clippers. Yeah. Got to get that win. But that's a wrap for the Laid Show with Lamar Odom and Aaron Cohen. We're out this joint. One more.